Timor have had an incredible run with their launch of the Sculptor Grinders on Kickstarter. So let's dive in and have a look at these. <laughs> I'm better from Coffee Parts, and we actually started working with Time More many years ago from their very first product and entering into the world of slow filter coffee. So the success on this Kickstarter campaign for us has come as no surprise. And after their Kickstarter campaign, which they had over 10,000 backers, 800 of which were from Australia where I'm at, I really do feel Time More is going to become a super recognized name in the world of coffee. The Time More Sculptor comes in two models. 064 and 078 and in this video we're going to dive into the differences between both of them and within that they come in two variants espresso and filter coffee depending on what your focus is just a quick note we've been supporting time more since their very first product and since then i have become a bit of a fanboy right now probably number one fanboy of time more so this video might sound biased and in this case these grinders have been sent to us so we can give them feedback early on but by no way have I been paid or sponsored to do this video and the thoughts are mine. Since the launch of the Kickstarter campaign and after our video on the Sculptor 078, we've been hit up a lot and asked, which grinder should I choose? What's the difference between the 064 and the 078? And what's the difference between the variants, espresso and filter? So in this video, we're gonna dive in and have a look at these differences and help choose which grinder is best for you. But before we do that, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps us grow and deliver even more content to you. Fundamentally, all these grinders are the same. They carry the same design language and same workflow. And the key features run across every model. Where things change is the use case. The smaller grinder is more focused on the home market, where the larger grinder is more focused on the specialty home market, so the top end of the home market, and the cafe and roastery scene. Now, when you're looking at the small versus large, or 064 versus 078, two fundamental differences are obviously your burr size, 64 mil in diameter versus 78 mil in diameter, and the motor, 150 watts versus a bigger 400 watts. Now, a minor difference is all these grinders have RPM control, but on the smaller grinder, you're going from 800 to 1200 in RPM control, with a bigger one goes up to 1400, so 800 to 1400. In reality, RPM control is a new feature that's coming out in quite a lot of new grinders, but it's somewhat unproven. It's nice to have, and I feel like Time Warp have recognized this and put the control at the back of the grinder, almost saying it's not the key feature, but the ability is there to control your RPMs. What they have done as a feature across the range is the fines catcher, where you can collect and dispose of those fines by knocking them out. And that's a patent design, it becomes super interesting on the filter side of coffee. So on filter, you really wanna grind out your coffee and catch those fines, because fines don't really work well. They really clog up the filter paper. On espresso, whether you collect them and dispose of them, or collect them and put them into the same dosing cup, really becomes more for workflow and what you like out of coffee. But the ability to control that is really neat. When it comes to dialing in the grinders, you've got the same dial across the range, but visually on the espresso side of the grinders, you've got slightly different markings where zero to three have micro measurements. So you can really see where you're dialing in. Obviously on filter, it's a bigger range, so you don't need those measurements displayed. And that's another difference. So you're really gonna pick your grinder based on the size, smaller versus larger, but also what you're using it for, predominantly espresso or predominantly filter. Now the espresso versions with the denomination S after the name, 064S, 078S, do espresso and both filter. You can do filter out of them, but they're predominantly focused on espresso. If your predominant focus is filter, then the filter version, which run the turbo burrs, really do perform exceptionally well for filter coffee, but they don't do espresso. So the question becomes, do you wanna do espresso and filter? If so, you pick the S version. If you really just wanna do the best filter you can, then you pick the non-S version. And when it comes to the size, 
If it's at home, the 064 is a nice option, but if you really want to take it to that nth degree, the 078 having that larger motor means on things of like being espresso, and if you want to do a super, super, super light roast at very low RPM, you're not going to have an issue with the bigger motor. On the smaller motor, it can become an issue. Now, the reality is most roasts are going to be medium roast to dark, so super light roast in espresso at low RPM probably is a bit of an outlier. And that's another thing that the 064 can do. Although that's an outlier, you've got the ability to change burrs. Now, Time will have been very clear that they've designed these burrs and engineered for these grinders. So they haven't really promoted the fact that you can go out and get aftermarket burrs, but they've been nice in doing a grinder at 64 mil with a screw pattern that is common. So you can go and get SSP burrs or other burrs and really play around with different geometry and different material. Although Timor publicly don't support that. On the 078, the burrs are quite unique to Timor. So currently there's no aftermarket burrs, but I do see these machines becoming super popular and almost developing cult-like status. So I think in time, burr manufacturers will jump on the bandwagon and build burrs when there's enough volume for them to make sense in doing so. And that's really the differences of these grinders. Basically use case, home, or home being speciality, like top end home, or cafe, definitely being the bigger version. And then whether you wanna do just espresso, or filter, or you want to do both, which means you'd probably pick the espresso version. So it's quite simple in that sense. From the actual using the grinder, the workflow on them is super easy. You pull the hopper back, load in your coffee, start the grinder, it grinds through, very, very minimal retention. Because of such tight tolerances inside, you get almost zero retention. Now, no grinder is actually perfectly zero. There's always some retention, but the exchange becomes very low. If you were to pull this apart and pick up all the ground coffee in there, you'd find that it's a very, very, very minute amount, and that's because the tolerances are incredibly tight. When it comes to pulling it apart and changing the burrs, it's easy to do, but it's not something you're gonna be doing on a daily basis. It does take a little bit of work, but it's been neatly put together. One thing I really like about the time or design language is how aesthetically beautiful it is. You don't see, everything feels put together and beautifully designed. You don't see screw holes or markings or cake, like everything's really been engineered. From the front, magnetically controlled, the lid comes out, you undo a screw, that's your lock screw, unscrew it, pull it back. We've shown you on our 078 video this process. There's quite a lot of other videos out there showing the process, but it's really simple. From a motor perspective, from the back, you just unwind the back cap and you can see into the motor, but you really don't wanna be doing this. It's more of a technician's job. And the screws underneath have been hidden under the rubber feet. So when you look at it, there's no joints, no screws. Really beautiful, and I know this doesn't affect coffee per se, but I do like when things are beautifully designed, unique, thought of, engineered. There's something about it rather than something that's just built to sell. So when it comes to coffee, and I feel like when you're buying a grinder, coffee part is a big thing. Not only are you trying to buy a beautiful grinder with great workflow that fits, whatever you're looking for, espresso, filter, small footprint, whatever that might be. But the coffee is an important element. What do these grinders produce? Now, you might notice we're missing the black 078 grinder, which we featured in the previous video. And that's because after I did that video, I took it home for the weekend, and well, it's been there ever since. I ended up moving from espresso to filter at home. Now, I've been drinking short blacks and long blacks for a long time now, but it's made me fall back in love with filter coffee. And an interesting part when it came to filter is although the 64 and the 78 produced beautiful results out of the turbo burst, I did find it a bit more clarity and a bit nicer on the bigger grinder. Now when it comes to espresso, we've only got the 064 for espresso. We don't have the 078 in the espresso version just yet. So in that sense, it's a bit hard to comment between the two. But we've been running the 064S as an espresso grinder in our warehouse next to our speedster. And the results it's producing, the body, it's just such a nice coffee. I've really been impressed for what effectively is a home grinder. Now, being able to change those burrs and play with the SSPs, 
does really change the profile of the coffee, but whichever way we've done it, it's been a super enjoyable grinder. There's been other channels that have really gone into the cupping and blind testing, and we'll leave some links below if you really wanna geek out in that aspect. But for me, grinders are not just about the coffee, but about the design, the workflow, and how they fit into the picture. And I can really see these smaller grinders next to anything from a Ranchilla Silvia Gadget Classic, all the way up to Giotto's, you know, the Rocket Range, La Mazorcos, and machines like that. When the 078, I really see that on the higher end of the scheme. The La Mazorcos, the Rockets, effectively when the Espresso version, which we haven't tested, comes out. And for filter coffee setup, I really do see the bigger ones in cafes and the smaller ones at home. So the question is, would I buy one? Well, yeah, I haven't bought it as such, but I've got the 078 at home, and I don't think it's now leaving my house. I'm really loving it. Would I buy these smaller grinders? Compared to others on the market, I would. And that's like, now looking at what the direct competitors are, and I don't think there is necessarily direct competitors, because although many of these grinders are same, same, but different, I really do feel time will have nailed it in so many ways. So I feel like if you're gonna compare it, you'll be comparing it to the DF64, the Option O, the Fellow Grinders, that kind of range. But we'll do a video separately, showing the pros and cons of each, because of course, every grinder has its pros and cons. But right now, I don't really see 100% direct competitor to these grinders. So my question to you is, do you feel like these grinders will achieve cult-like status, like the EK or the Niche did? Let me know in the comments below, yes or no. And like always, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps us grow and develop even more content. Thank you again and see you on the next video.